Good morning, Max. Are you ready for today's English lesson? Hello, Mr. Parker. Yes, I'm super excited. What are we going to learn today? Today, we are going to explore some idiomatic expressions that are often used when talking about money. These phrases are very common among native English speakers and can be quite useful for you in various situations. That sounds amazing. I always get excited about learning new expressions. I think they help me understand the English language better and communicate more naturally. That's great, Max. Let's dive into our first expression of the day. Break the bank. Imagine you are going shopping and you see something you really like, but it is very expensive. If you decide to buy it, you might spend all your money or even more than you have. That's when we say it would break the bank. It's like saying it would empty your bank account. Because it's so costly. Can you think of a way to use break the bank in a sentence? Uh, let me think for a bit. Oh, I got it. My dad went to Las Vegas last year and almost broke the bank. That means it was very expensive, right? Excellent job, Max. Now that you've got the hang of break the bank, let's explore another intriguing expression. Be in the red. This is a phrase that often pops up in conversations about money and finances. It's like a little warning sign. Can you guess what it might mean? Do you have any thoughts on this one? Hmm, that's a new one for me. Does it have something to do with colors? Like when something is red? Does it mean it's bad or something? That's a good start, Max. You're on the right track thinking about colors. Being in the red does involve the color red, but it's used in a specific financial context. It means that your expenses are more than your income, so your account balance is negative. It's like when you're playing a game and your scores goes below zero. You're in the red zone. Any idea why we might use the color red to describe the situation? Oh, is it because red is often used as a warning color? Like in traffic lights or warning signs? Exactly, Max. Red is often used as a warning color, and in finance, it's used to sign out that there is a problem with your finance. A long time ago, accountants would use red ink to write down the numbers when someone was losing money. So, being in the red means you need to be careful with your spending. Oh, I get it now. So, if my mom tells me, we are in the red this month, it means we've spent too much money and need to start saving more. It's like a warning to tighten your belts and be careful with our spending, right? Spot on, Max. You've nailed it. When you hear someone is in the red, it's a sign to take a closer look at the budget and find ways to cut back on spending. Great job connecting the dots. Now, let's tackle another expression that's a bit trickier, but just as important. Make ends meet. Have you heard this one before? Any guesses on what it could mean? Mm. That seems a bit more complicated. I'm not sure. 
does it have something to do with making something fit or match somewhere? That's a good try, Max. But actually, make ends meet, it's an expression we use when someone is earning just enough to cover their basic needs. Like food, housing, and other essential expenses. It's like the person is doing the minimum necessary to continue living without major financial problems. Oh, now I get it. So, if my neighbor says, I've been working overtime to make ends meet. He's saying that he's making an extra effort to earn enough money to pay his bills and keep his house running, right? Exactly, Max. You've interpreted it very well. This expression is often used by people who are going through tight financial times and need to work harder to ensure they can pay for their basic needs. The next expression is interesting. Pinch pennies. What do you think that means? Hmm. And that one sounds a bit simpler. Is it about being really careful with your money? Like making sure you don't spend too much and always have enough for the important stuff? You've got it, Max. A penny pincher is someone who's really careful with their money, always trying to save as much as they can. They are the kind of person who loves a good bargain and doesn't like to waste money on things they don't need. Oh, now I understand. My grandpa is definitely a penny pincher. He's always on the lookout for discounts and always finds ways to spend less. That's great, Max. It seems like your grandpa is a perfect example of a pen pincher. Now, how about we try one more expression? Let's talk about having money to burn. An idea what that might mean? Mm, that makes me think of having more money than necessary for daily expenses. Exactly, Max. Have money to burn is an expression we use when someone has so much money that they can spend it on things that aren't really necessary, just for fun or pleasure. It's like the person has so much money that they could even burn it without worrying. Uh, so, for example, if someone decides to buy a luxury sports car, just because they have the money, that would be considered having money to burn? That's right, Max. Buying an expensive car just on a whim is a classic example of having money to burn. You are really getting the hang of these expressions. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Learning these expressions has been a lot of fun. I can't wait to start using them in conversations and sound more like a native English speaker. That's the spirit, Max. Keep working hard and practicing, and you will see how your fluency in English will improve. Especially when it comes to talking about money and finances. I'm looking forward to our next lesson, Mr. Parker. See you soon! Until next time, Max, remember to keep practicing and exploring new expressions in English. See you later! If you've made it this far, first of all, thank you. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Your like and comments are a few to make more videos. See you in the next video. Take care!